welcome back to coverage of people buying a house and then living in it. So, hello, Jeff. You want to buy a house? Here's a house. What do you think? Yeah. Do you like the house? Yes, yeah, fine. Will Jeff be able to buy the house that's fine of his dreams? Yes, he will. It's in budget, is it, Jeff? Yeah. That was not a close one. No. We'll be catching up with Jeff when he's bought his house, which is now. Jeff, now living in your house. Yeah. What's that like? It's all right. Doing a bit of DIY, putting some shelves up, but nothing major. We'll be catching up with Jeff's attempts to live his having things on shelves dreams now. How are the shelves? Useful. Well, that's fascinating. So, to sum up, Jeff, who you don't know, has bought a house and is now living in it, having put up some shelves, and I think we can all agree that that's basically a good thing. Join me next week when I'll be presenting coverage of people arranging to rent a flat and then going to the shop to buy some food to eat in it. <laughs>
Four hundred and four. Four hundred and four. Ah. Four hundred and forty-four point four. Forty-four point four four. Forty-four. Four. That's Wanganam. <laughs> Julie, you've been Wanganam, but Simon, you are today's number one. More number one tomorrow, but until then, stay number one. Two of the greatest actors of their generation, there's no doubt about it. But um, with that goes a certain amount of ego. Yes? So the only way we could get them to do Holmes and Watson in the West End was uh, if they alternated who played Holmes. <laughs> night by night. <laughs> One night Alec would play Holmes. So you see, Watson, the advantage of my unique powers of observation. And the next night it would be Michael's turn. <laughs> so you see, Watson. The advantage of my unique powers of observation. And I suppose there was a certain amount of one-upmanship. So you see, Watson, the advantage of my unique powers of observation. <laughs> well, yeah, I think that really added something. Well, I don't know how much the audience picked up. So you see, Watson, the advantage of my unique powers of observation. So when we came to make the film, uh, we were faced once again with the problem of which of them would play Holmes. But uh, I think everyone agrees we found a rather elegant solution. Not like you to be superstitious, Holmes. It's hardly superstition, Watson. I was merely acknowledging the power of fear and what effect that fear can have on the minds of the ignorant or vulnerable. Holmes, you... You're not seriously suggesting that the villagers believe... The story of the Phantom Wolf? <laughs> oh, they did. Oblige me, if you will, old fellow, by fetching Madison's Witchcraft Almanac from the library, and I'll show you just how powerful a grip some of these old myths can have on people. <laughs> Middle shelf, isn't it? Yes, just above the encyclopedias. <laughs> ah, yes, I've got it. Shall I bring it through? No, stay where you are. I'll join you. And, of course, they both felt very strongly that it was important to to keep all of that wonderful energy that the stage production had had. That's not the witchcraft almanac, Watson, you lot. <laughs> The film gave them a great opportunity to get their kids into the business. We can't think on empty stomachs, Watson. Let's see what Mrs. Hudson has laid out for us. What have you got for us, Mrs. Hudson? <laughs> Crumpets! <laughs> OK, ten minutes for lighting. David? Yeah? Is it possible? Yeah. Uh, what? No, that's all right. Well, what's the question? It's just something in this, but... You're just going to be all horrible. No, I'm not. What is it? Well, just, in here, it looks like... I mean... I mean, basically, can people levitate? Can people levitate? Oh, I knew I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> can people levitate? Don't... just... I mean, it's no, isn't it? Yes, it is no. Don't do <laughs> that! What? I haven't said anything. Don't have a go at me. You're the moron who thinks people might be able to levitate. It was very convincing. Can you levitate? I, I knew you'd be a... I, I'm just trying to get to the root of why you felt the need to ask such a humiliating question. <laughs> because I have the intellectual confidence to appear stupid sometimes. You're the thick bastard who has to pretend he knows everything. Well, certainly I'm sufficiently insecure to have felt the need to establish to my own satisfaction before the age of 33 whether or not humans can fly. That makes me a chippy little autodidact in your eyes, and so be it. I'm just not going to ask you anything ever again. Welcome back to coverage of people buying a house and then living in it. So, hello, Jeff. You want to buy a house? Here's a house. What do you think? Yeah. Do you like the house? Yes, yeah, fine. Will Jeff be able to buy the house that's fine of his dreams? Yes, he will. It's in budget, is it, Jeff? Yeah. That was not a close one. No. We'll be catching up with Jeff when he's bought his house, which is now. Jeff, now living in your house. Yeah. What's that like? 
It's all right, doing a bit of DIY, putting some shelves up, but nothing major. And we'll be catching up with Jeff's attempts to live his having things on shelves dreams now. How are the shelves? Useful. Well, that's fascinating. So, to sum up, Jeff, who you don't know, has bought a house and is now living in it, having put up some shelves, and I think we can all agree that that's basically a good thing. Join me next week when I'll be presenting coverage of people arranging to rent a flat and then going to the shop to buy some food to eat in it. <laughs> Sir, we still have a problem with Detective Harrison. Yes, Mr. Harrison has an irritating talent for disrupting my arrangements. Would you like me to have him removed? Yes, perhaps. Perhaps it would be better if Mr. Harrison were taken out of the picture. Sorry, guys, you're doing it again. What, Alan? Have him removed. Take him out of the picture. I thought we agreed at the meeting that these terms are needlessly ambiguous. I suppose. We all agreed that from now on, when we want someone murdered, i.e. deliberately killed to death, then that's what we're going to say. Look, everyone knows what we mean. Well, on this occasion, perhaps. I mean, that was an order to murder Detective Harrison, right? He has become a nuisance. <laughs> right, but a nuisance we should murder. Is that it? I mean, my nephew's a nuisance, but... <laughs> You see what I mean? Yes. Yeah, all right. Well, can you say it then, please? Uh, OK. Please deal with the Harrison situation. You see, that's no good. Oh, that was perfectly clear. Oh, what are you talking about, Keith? This is going to be, let's hope Professor Ritson meets with a little accident all over again. We spent nine months hoping that Professor Ritson would meet with an accident before Leslie made it clear it was an accident we were supposed to make happen. All right, you've made your point. You two get on with your work now. Oh, murdering? Yes. 